Welcome to Young and Adulting, a podcast of the Young Adults community at Christ Fellowship Church. Our hope is to create a safe place for authentic conversation around the ins and outs of life as we all try to navigate following Jesus in the world we live in today. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the conversation. Well, welcome to season seven of our Young Plus Adulting podcast. And hey, this season, we're going to be diving in the book of John uh, and just talking about the different passages of scripture in the book of John. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been diving in the book of John and our young adults on Tuesday night. And man, I am super elated today because we have some special people here with us today. And uh, in this season, we're going to be bringing in some theologians, some resident theologians. We're going to be bringing in some young adults to ask some tough questions. And today, I want to encourage you to take out your notebook, take out an iPad, take out something that you can take notes with today, because we have our very own Pastor Randy Allison in the house today. Let's go. I am so excited about this. And, And Pastor Randy, thank you so much for being here today. We also have Lacey and and Braden here today as well. We're going to be asking some tough questions today. And Pastor Randy, thank you so much for being here with your busy schedule and all of the things that you do. And uh, you are a a professional theologian uh, here at Christ Fellowship for our Southeastern University School here. And uh, speaking of your schedule, would you mind just sharing just a little bit about yourself and yeah. uh, what your life yeah. is like in the day to day as a theologian? Well, first, it's great to be back. Uh, I love the opportunity to do this. Um, I got a little scared when you said professional theologian, but I guess I am paid for it. So, yeah, so I guess that does qualify there. Right. Um, a typical day for me, I, well, I get the privilege to do a lot of cool things at Christ mm-hmm. Fellowship. Um, I, I am our first full-time lecturer, so mm-hmm. a full-time professor at uh, CFSEU, so I enjoy that. Um, but I'm also still a research pastor, and mm-hmm. so I do uh, quite a bit of writing with discipleship, and so I still get the opportunity to have my hands in that world too. Yeah. So I really love what I get to do. A typical day, I mean, again, I learned a long time ago, if you want to you want to excel, you get your butt out of bed early. And uh, come on. So I'm up usually at 5, 5 30 in the mornings. I'm usually at my desk by seven. And I just, I need that because I need to prep. I want to, you know, spend my time with God and make sure, you know, take, I have time if I want to go walk around or, mm-hmm. you know, get out in nature a little bit, you know, just to have that opportunity. Um, and then I usually will have some writing time. And then my classes are usually in the afternoons. Mm-hmm. It depends on the schedule, of course, term to term. But uh, but yeah yeah so I get the and then and then things like this the opportunity to teach and and be at Royal Palm or here at Gardens for young adults and preaching and all that so I just love the opportunities I get to do here mm-hmm. but uh, but my days are full but that's what I want yeah that's that's so awesome and Pastor Randy anytime I hear you speak I'm like man I wish that I could know the Word of God like you and 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 if you're interested in hearing of uh, more teachings from Pastor Randy we'll have the link below. Uh, labeled CFSCU, you can just click that link and and check those things out. And speaking of SCU, we actually have two SCU students here today, Lacey and Brayden as well. And and as you got all of us, we're going to be unpacking John chapter two uh, today. And so let's get into it. Uh, Pastor Randy, uh, we we look in John chapter two and, and, and John references Jesus being angry, right? And, and, and a lot of times when we think of Jesus, we think of grace and love and, and right, miracles right. and signs and wonders. But but John seems to mention that Jesus was angry in this particular passage. Can you kind of unpack that for us today? Yeah, yeah. This is a great passage. Uh, specifically, if you have your Bibles, it's John 2, 13 through 17. I'll read it in a, in a few seconds. But uh, but yeah, all four Gospels, they talk about uh, um, a cleansing of the temple. Mm-hmm. That's how this is referred to. And uh, But John, I think... It's even a little more graphic with what mm-hmm. he describes, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. So I'll tell you what, let me read it real quick, uh, and, and then uh, we'll kind of get into particulars of it, and I'll set the context, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, but in John 2, 13 through 17, uh, it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, 
doves for sacrifices. Mm -hmm. He was also, or there were also dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes that were nearby and chased them out of the temple. <laughs> I liked, oh, how, how quick was Jesus? Right. Kind of one, you right. know, yeah. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers, coins over the floor, and he turned over the tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Wow. Now, the context, you just need, you know, for those who aren't really sure what's going on here, Back in the day with Jesus, I John starts this at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they have Jesus cleansing the temple almost right before a Passion Week. Mm -hmm. So you've got a little timing issue that a lot of folks like to debate, scholars who get paid lots of money to write books about <laughs> stuff like this. And uh, so we'll save that for another day. But for John, he starts this, I would say this is probably somewhere around 27 AD, something mm -hmm. like that. The temple was a big complex. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, you had the building, which we know, if you study Old Testament, in, you know, there was the holy place and the holy of holies in that building. But then you had this huge courtyard area, mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus is talking about. And again, during Passover, all Jews were expected to come to, to Jerusalem, and you offered your sacrifices. So over time, folks decided, let's make it convenient for folks to offer sacrifices. Yeah. We'll sell animals here. We'll sell this. While you're here, you can pay your temple tax, which you couldn't use Roman currency for that, so mm -hmm. you had to have money changers. Yeah. That's what all that was about. But again, what's the point? Folks made profit off yeah. this. And yeah. so that's what Jesus is starting to recognize. And yeah. so you can see that as he is looking at this, he is starting, and again, we'll kind of get to some of this in a minute, as what got him angry. Mm. But for now, the corruption he saw. Yeah. And, and, and I like how he says at one point, and again, if you caught in verse 16, he talks about stop turning. He doesn't say this house. Stop turning this place. He doesn't say. He says, stop turning my father's wow. house wow. into a marketplace. So, so Jesus is distinguishing, this is different, and I have a different relationship with what's going on yeah. here. Yeah. And so when we talk about Jesus getting angry, what we'll get to is that he sure did, yeah. and he had reason to. Yeah. yeah. Randy, I think that was awesome, and I have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Jesus flipping tables in the temple and talking about how that was dishonoring his father's house. Do you think that that's the number one thing that angers Jesus the most? Or are there other things that upset him? And what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. Um, very good question. There's so many different things to address with that. I would start with this. First, what we see is Jesus is reminding us, and again, Paul will say this also in Ephesians 4, 26, 27, be angry yet don't sin. Mm. Right. So Christians can be angry at times, but Jesus also displays how that anger should be displayed yeah. and, and, and exhibited. And so those are some of the things we can get to. Um, but for Jesus, a lot of folks will also refer to it as, well, you know, he shows us what righteous anger should yeah. be like. And so again, kind of what you were saying, what angered him? What was he getting, mm -hmm. what was he upset about? What was, you know, what was the corruption, you know, we were saying earlier? Well, a couple things, okay? First is when a wrong or an injustice is done, mm -hmm. that will bring about the righteous anger. And so that can be in a variety of things. Now, here in the temple, what we see going on is, in a sense, the price gouging, mm -hmm. you know, you know t trying to make profit off of people who were simply trying to come and worship God mm -hmm. and, and offer their sacrifices. So that's the th first thing. The other thing to notice with Jesus' righteous anger is, is that he was not focused on punishing the people, okay? Yeah. And that's how we are. Yeah. A lot of times when we're angry, it's like, oh, it's Braden. Braden, <laughs> take me off, and, and I'm going to get him. I, now I've crossed the vengeance. Yeah, mm. that's great. Okay? That's well, great. vengeance doesn't belong to me. That belongs to the Lord. Wow. So, so that's the thing that we need to realize. Jesus' righteous anger wasn't necessarily directed at punishing people mm -hmm. at this point. That's great. Uh, now, I know at, at right now some of you are thinking, yeah, but he had a whip. Well, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll, we'll talk about the whip in a few minutes. We'll get there. But, <laughs> but just for now is that, yes, that was not what the whip was for, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, next is, again, when we're talking about righteous anger, it's not just emotional or reactive, mm -hmm. okay? Um, there is a deliberateness to what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Jesus, as I see it described in all four Gospels, yeah. Jesus is walking around, he's seeing it, and it's just like it's simmering in him. Mm -hmm. He's recognizing what's going on. He's not just explosively reacting. He is reacting because 
he needs to because of yeah. what he's witnessing and who he is. Yeah. And let's not forget, and whose house he's protecting. Yeah. That's great. That's what we need to remember also. And then the last thing I would say uh, is, is, again, yeah, it's not emotional, but I would say for some of us, if we're angry, a lot of times we get angry. Uh, we get destructive. Mm-hmm. We get hateful. Yeah. And and he doesn't do that either. Mm-hmm. So I think if you take those four characteristics, you'll see a little bit of what Jesus displays on how we can be angry mm-hmm. and yet not sin. Mm-hmm. It's that righteous indignation that we see with what's going on with him. And, uh, and honestly, anger is a big issue for a lot of us. Mm-hmm. It's a, it, I struggled with it. Yeah. Okay, I grew up and I wasn't a Christian until I was about 18. I knew a certain way to get angry and usually included a whole bunch of four-letter words and included, you know, yelling at people and throwing stuff. And yeah. I'd punch holes in walls before. Mm-hmm. And sorry, but I did. And so, so you know, I do think that as Christians, we do need to understand what Jesus is displaying right. for us. There is an appropriate time and way to express that right. anger. That's great. Wow. I, I love, I actually never thought about like how it was not for punishing the people, mm-hmm. but uh, this story has, I, I, grew, I grew up in the church and so I've heard this story a few times and Will, you actually did a, a good point. Like I've always thought of like, okay, so Jesus has mercy and his grace and stuff like this, but at the same time, he did get angry right. in the temple. Right. And so when I've read this story, I've like often been like terrified, like, okay, I have sin in my life. Mm-hmm. So like at what point? Like, would Jesus be angry at this? Like, so in like the way I think of it is like, if Jesus, if we're the temple and Jesus and the Holy Spirit resides in us, what tables would he be flipping in our life and in the lives of today? Do you have anything about that? Yeah. Now that, that takes, you know, you got like a five part question there. <laughs> um, that takes us down some roads where, we, yeah, he, he, let's go down a few of them and we'll see. The question that folks look at when they see this passage is, okay, so what's Jesus saying to the church today? Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, to answer that quickly, I think Jesus is saying quite a few things. Okay. First, and again, you take some of the other gospels and what they say, Jesus says it. He says, You've made my father's house into a marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've made it into a den of robbers. Mm-hmm. When it's supposed to be a house of prayer, yeah, okay. that's what you see in most of the context of Jesus is saying. This should be a house of prayer, and look what you've made it. Mm-hmm. That says a lot. Yeah. Okay. What is the church supposed to be? It's supposed to be a place where we can come and Talk with God and hear from God. That's great. The other thing I think it also says to us is when we talk about the church today, church would be a place where folks can come to get reconciled to God. Mm-hmm. That's a sacrificial system going on. Yeah. Folks were able to get their sins taken care of by offering those sacrifices. Of course, Jesus now, mm-hmm. praise God, has <laughs> died once and for all for us on the cross. So we have the ultimate sacrifice and we just need to confess those sins. Mm-hmm. But I still wonder at times the church at large in mm-hmm. Western civilization here. Here. Is it more focused on other things, or are mm. we really focused on this is a place that is a house of prayer, yeah. be reconciled with God, or are we just come and we'll make you laugh, yeah. we'll entertain you for a little bit, yeah. we'll, we'll have some good Christian karaoke, you know, all that, mm. all that stuff wow. we talk about at times. So that's where I think it is a penetrating question for the church at large today. But, Braden, you highlighted the main point. If you stop there... That's not what Jesus is talking about mm-hmm. because that's not the church is not the temple of God today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Christians are. That's great. Yeah. Okay, we say this all the time. Church is not a building you walk into, but it's a family you belong to. Right, yeah. And that's because we are the temple of God. And if you want to see where this is, you know, oh, that's a pretty bold statement. Professor. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I'm just reiterating what Paul said. Right. First Corinthians 3:16. He goes on and he says, you are the temple of God. And the word he uses, there's two words for temple, the big outer court complex, Mm -hmm. entirety of it, or just the buildings where Mm -hmm. it it was encased, the holy place and the holy of holies. Mm -hmm. That's the word that's used for you and me. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we are that inner sanctuary where the Holy Spirit dwells. And what I think he is saying to us, because as he looked out and saw that corruption, you're right. It makes us evaluate, what's my temple like where the Holy Spirit lives in my life? Mm -hmm. Is there corruption I need to address? Are there sins I need to confess? Mm -hmm. Are there relationships I need Mm -hmm. to address? Mm -hmm. All of that goes into it. So yeah, that's the short answer to that massive question you asked, Braden. (laughs) But but it's good, because I think that's exactly what this passage is really getting to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's so good, Pastor. And, And just thinking about the 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 Jesus's turning tables, and uh, it 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 makes me 
kind of transition to this point of, mm -hmm. but Jesus still created this or made this whip. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and anytime I think of a whip, I, I think of <laughs> obviously me being a kid and my mom <laughs> right, going to the closet. And once I saw the whip, it this sounds I, like confession, right? Right, oh right, here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. It definitely does. But I, I, I want to. Can you help unpack what? Yeah, what was yeah. the point of that? Why would yeah. Jesus do that? What's the significance behind yeah. this whip? Again. Go back to what I said a few minutes ago with the context, because mm -hmm. that's important. Jesus is walking around, he's observing what's going on, and then he recognizes, oh, wow, this is not good. Mm -hmm. And so to make the whip, it, you know, he had he had to get the rope and bind it together. Right. Okay? This took time. It wasn't just laying over there. He mm -hmm. had to make it. That's why I said earlier, this was a deliberate choice he made. This wasn't just flying off the handle in anger. Mm -hmm. He made this. And the other thing we need to recognize, and this is where it's important to really see scripture for what it says. Mm -hmm. We want to put Indiana Jones into this context. And, you know, he's got the way he's cracking, he's, he's hitting people and, you know, chasing snakes and all that stuff and all. No, no. What we see in the text is Jesus didn't use this mm -hmm. on anybody. Mm -hmm. he, he used it, we believe, mostly because that's how you drove animals out. Right. Mm. And that's what the whip was for. It was mm -hmm. to get all the animals out, to get, get the dove, you know, all of that stuff, to get them out because to clear it away so that people could come here to do what they were supposed to do. This is a house of prayer, a place to be reconciled to God, everything like that. So the whip was more symbolic of the fact that Jesus had the authority to clean house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did. But he didn't use it to beat anybody or any of that. Scripture does not hint at that. That doesn't say it. Mm -hmm. And we're wrong to make that assumption because mm -hmm. that's not what Jesus was about. Jesus was about his father's house being its being used for its stated purposes. Mm -hmm. Not only, I look at it this way. He was protecting what the temple was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And that meant at times it had to be cleansed. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Well, that's really great. Yeah. Good. I, I, I like, uh, and then uh, let me add this real quick before, because I don't know if you're going to cut me off soon or not, but let me add this real quick. <laughs> if anyone's listening to this, here's the other thing to get from this. Ready? Jesus isn't mad at you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know we're talking about anger and all of that, and I'd hate for someone to leave here and walk out of well, here and just say, yeah. you know what, man, so, wow, Jesus seems ticked off. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. He is not mad at you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, li I, I like what Tim Keller said one time. He said it this way. It doesn't matter what you've done. Keller says this. If you were a hundred times worse than you are, your sins are no match for the love and mercy of God. Wow. Mm -hmm. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for you. Mm -hmm. So don't leave here thinking God's mad at you. Oh, you don't understand what I've done. I don't understand it. We don't understand it, but God does. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, he's not mad at you. He wants a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. So please know, as we're, you know, we're talking about Jesus all mad and everything, but no, 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 no. <laughs> this was a specific incident in which mm -hmm. it was a display of righteous anger, but God is not mad at you. He loves you. And that's why I make, make sure folks understand with the context of everything that we've been talking about. One thing that I, I do really appreciate that what you said is that God isn't mad at you. And even there at the temple, he's not mad at the people. He's mad at what right. it became. Like he, right. God wants a relationship. And that's because true. the temple became that, it, the relationship wasn't there. And so he saw the pain of the people and pain that God wants to have the relationship mm -hmm. with his people. Mm -hmm. And so like, I would love to ask like, what other things do you think? Yeah. God get yeah. I mean, yeah, we've talked about obviously sin and the reason he gets upset with sin in our lives and all that is because of the disruption it causes. Mm -hmm. The sin prevents us having the relationship with God and living the life as we're supposed to be living created in the image of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that does bring that anger, that righteous anger, because he knows and he wants better for us. Uh, also injustice, and that's the corruption we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier, you know, all of that. But the other thing, and here's one that kind of slips by, is, is that Jesus, when we are going through tough times, when we when we are suffering, when we're going through pain and suffering, he, he it can bring that same kind of anger at times. And I perfect example of this is John 11 with the mm -hmm. raising of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone knows John 11, 35. Jesus wept, okay? <laughs> Which, by the way, could be a whole podcast on its own right, right. there. Oh, yeah. right. But the other thing is, is John eleven thirty three 33, when Jesus saw Mary and Martha and they were in tears, and then he saw all the mourners who were suffering because of the death of Lazarus. And then Jesus comes walking up days later and, and it says in John eleven thirty three, he was deeply moved in spirit and he was troubled. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. 
That is not the best English translation because what the literal language really says is Jesus was deeply indignant. Mm -hmm. My translation, Jesus was angry. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is because he saw the suffering that death brings. He saw the pain that these folks were experiencing. And that brought him to anger because now here's a cool thing. Jesus is going to solve that problem Mm -hmm. when he dies on the cross and then is raised three days later. But at the moment... Yeah, I thought it was interesting that Jesus, it, it stirred up anger in him because he saw the pain and suffering that, that this world can bring, that death can bring, that, you know, all the different struggles we have. So that's a good point. And I do believe when we are struggling and going through those times, we can know that God, through Jesus Christ, is there with us by the power of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to help, encourage, because he knows what that pain and suffering is like. Wow. Well, that's that's so good, Pastor Randy, and yeah. and man, I'm just just thinking about the just how how good God is. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. He's never really mad at us. Yeah. He's he's mad about us, right? He mm-hmm. wants he wants that genuine relationship with us. And um, as we wrap up today, I, I want to kind of just lighten the mood. <laughs> right? we, we're talking about suffering, Jesus and mad. pain, yeah. Yeah. Jesus yeah. being yeah. angry. Uh, but I'm curious to know this. If if you could go, if if you could go back in time, you can either go okay. back in time or forward in time. Which one would you choose, and why? Oh. I'm curious to know. Lacey, how about you take this one first? I was thinking about this, and I honestly think I would go back in time. And mm. the reason is because I would love to have a sit down conversation with Paul about how he managed to do the things that he did, and. Um, I know plenty of people that would go forward in time just Mm -hmm. to see the life that they are living in the future and the calling God's placed on their lives. But I think that going back in time would give me like a faith boost to continue Mm -hmm. the walk because I don't think the world's getting much better, but I know I can say that I'm not near experiencing the things that they were experiencing back then. And so to get a glimpse of that, to be able to take forward, I think would be super cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Good. Your, your answer was way holier than mine. My goodness. Um, I definitely don't want to go forward because I'd be a little, uh, I think that would freak me out more than anything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I definitely agree with going backwards. My my whole idea was not to have a conversation with Paul. Mm-hmm. Although that would be kind of cool. I just kind of want to see like ancient Greece and, mm-hmm. and Egypt and all those places because that's like my favorite time period. Mm-hmm. And so to like ha- understand cool. how the world was working then, yeah. uh, the, the philosophers, like, Ancient Greece, that's just so interesting to me and to see it actually happening. Mm-hmm. Although it would be really painful to see like, you know, the absence of like deodorant and stuff like that. But, wow. you know, <laughs> all of those things are very important. But uh, I would definitely go back just to see yeah. how life worked when there was no internet and it was technically yeah. slower mm-hmm. of, a, of a life. But yeah, yeah that would cool. be my answer. Good. Man, I'm all about the future. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wow. understand the past, and that's good. But man, I want to see the future. I want to see how God's kingdom is expanding. I want to see the struggle. I want to see the good. I mean, you know. And again, I'm showing my age here. I can remember, you know, 30 years ago, and I, and I often do. I look and marvel at just the, the progress that's been made, mm-hmm. the regression mm-hmm. that we've had mm-hmm. as a as a race, as humanity. Um, uh, the hope I still have yeah. and yeah the future I'd love to just go and g- again see what it's like 30 years from now mm-hmm. see what it's like 50 years from now I'm fascinated by it. It, mm-hmm. I, I'm all in on the future mm-hmm. well that's so great man I, I love all of you guys' answers and I, I don't I don't know about you but I've so enjoyed this conversation uh, Pastor Randy thank you so much for your insight your wisdom your understanding mm-hmm. uh, your teachings Lacey mm-hmm. and Braden thank you guys for your mm-hmm. questions yes. as well I've so enjoyed this conversation conversation and young adults, I, I hope that you've enjoyed this as well. I hope you were taking notes uh, and, and, and hope if you like this 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 uh, conversation, please like, subscribe, share this with your friends if you have the opportunity to. We would love for you to, to, to subscribe to our channel uh, as well. So, hey, love you guys. And we will see you next week as we continue the topic on John. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Young and Adulting. Follow us on Instagram at cf.youngadults. And if there's a topic you'd like to talk about, we want to hear about it. Send us an email or leave a comment with your thoughts. We'll see you next time.